Hey Supes, I'm here today to talk about end-to-end -end encryption, or to put it another way, why we decided we did not want to see end user data, and so we sought out to make that impossible for us to do so. My name is Mike Farrell, and I'm the CTO and co-founder of Transcend, a data privacy company. So here at Transcend, we believe that data privacy is a human right. There've been a ton of great privacy laws coming in around the world, and these laws are really great. However, there still seems to be a bit of a discrepancy between what these laws are striving for and what we're seeing in the industry today. So we sought out to solve this problem and, and figure out how we can make it easier for businesses to offer data rights to their customers. We power end-to-end -end data subject access and erasure requests and allow customers of our customers to view and visualize their data. We realized it would be painfully ironic for a data privacy company to actually have access to the end user data. So we sought out to solve the problem. How can we process these requests while making it impossible for us to see that data ourselves? In order to solve this problem, we had a couple of requirements. Um, security was obviously a top priority. We had to make sure that there was no way for this, this data to be um, breached in any sort of way. We also had to make sure it was accessible to all people around the world. Um, we did not want people to have to download some special decryption software in order to get access to their data. We also had to have no file size limits. We needed this to be an audible process. Um, and lastly, we wanted to provide a clean interface for people to actually visualize their data. And so if we were decrypting on the browser, this couldn't block the main thread and create a, a choppy interface for the end user. So ultimately our solution was to build an open source library called Penumbra. Um, Penumbra implements end-to-end -end encryption and decryption in the browser on files that may not fit into the memory of the consumer's machine. Penumbra takes advantage of a new writable stream feature in Chrome and Edge in order to decrypt files in chunk. We stream files from a backend and we, we stream that through a decryption algorithm that decrypts on the browser without having to buffer the entire file into memory. We ultimately decided to open source Penumbra because we believe that the encryption it would be a great movement across industries to create a more secure online world. We found it hard to find libraries to do this, and so we wanted to lower the entry for other developers who wanted to build secure applications. This technology could be used for other things such as video chat or file transferring systems. Um, most of those right now kind of have a file size limit, and we'd hope to allow you know, file drops to even be incorporated into those, those messaging platforms. Or say you're a human rights or activist group and you need to send data securely between, between people in, in disparate places. The project's never really done. Um, there's quite a bit of opportunity for people to hop on and, and contribute. Not all browsers currently support writable streams. Uh, we've been watching closely as Firefox is, is laying out the groundwork for this feature and we hope to you know, follow those along and incorporate the, the different browsers in as they support writable streams. And at the same time, we wanna make sure we have sane fallbacks so that if there's an old browser, there still is some way for small packets to be viewed on, on the browser. Secondly, we want to improve the API for the web worker communication channel. Thirdly, we want to increase the flexibility of encryption schemes that Penumbra can support. Thank you everyone for listening. I hope this was a great way to provide a bit of insight about how Transcend thinks about end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, please get in touch if you have any questions or would like to talk more about data rights and privacy infrastructure.